Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is going to be a really short one because I'm just going to show you how to nest if statements. And nested statements or functions or if statements, anything like that, or we'll say if then or loops or anything else that you can nest. Uh, it's pretty much just the idea of one thing inside the other. So for example, if I said this, the type function is nested inside of the print function. And I mean, that's really about it. I could also nest again. I could say float. Whoops. Oh, I'm missing a parenthesis. There we go. Uh, so I have now nested a float inside a type inside a print. Okay, and you can do that as much as you want. Be careful because nesting things can get very confusing, uh, especially with if statements. When you have multiple if statements, it could end up being a little confusing. Okay, so let's say uh, let's say we're gonna do make two variables here. We're gonna show you how to do this uh, with if statements. So I'm gonna say favorite color is equal to blue, and we'll say favorite I don't know food is equal to let's say dim sum. Okay. So uh, let's make an if statement here uh, based on colors and I'll make, I'll make three of them here. So I'll say if favorite color is equal to blue, then uh, let's print uh, that's my favorite two. Okay. Uh, LF favorite color is equal to green and so we'll say print uh, that's not bad either that's not I'll say I'll say that's my second favorite color and then all else will say eh not a bad color okay so in this case if I run this oh I'm missing a colon here I get that's my favorite too okay so favorite color is blue and that says that's my favorite that's cool okay uh, now uh, we're gonna nest something in here based on your favorite food so if your favorite color is blue and your favorite color favorite food is dim sum that's a pretty big coincidence right so what we'll say is inside the if statement I'm gonna say if favorite food is equal to dim sum then print food and color what are the odds okay uh, else then we'll just print that's my favorite color too okay so if the food matches and the color matches then we say um, we'll say that's my favorite color too now if I say I favorite color is green and I say if uh, favorite food is equal to dim sum then we'll put uh, favorite food but not color what a shame else we'll just print that's my second favorite color and then else we'll do the same thing here we'll say uh, well in this case it, color doesn't match but maybe dim sum still matches so we'll still say favorite food is equal to dim sum uh, then you can just do uh, print well at least we can eat together and otherwise, we'll type, eh, not a bad color, not a bad color. Um, let's say change this here. We're going to say, uh, we have nothing in common, and that's so sad. Okay, so if I run this, food and color, what are the, what are the odds? Uh, let me expand this a bit so you can see. 
everything here. Uh, then let's change my favorite color to green. Now I'll say favorite food, but but not color. What a shame. Okay, so our if I change dim sum to uh, I don't know tempura, something like that. Ah, uh, that's my second favorite color. Okay, or if I change this back to blue, but not favorite food, say that's my favorite color too. Okay, and if I change this to dim sum and favorite color, well, what we want, uh, let's see, we need to change color to something like red. So it says, at least we can eat together. So it comes and hits this one. So a nested if statement, very, very useful. Uh, you're probably going to use it at some point. Uh, in fact, if you do the homework or the suggested homework stuff or practice, whatever you want to call it, in this section, uh, you'll, you'll do some nested if statements. But the problem is, is a nested if statement can get really complex really fast. So if you start nesting things un under dim sum, then you're going to have another nested if and another. And before you know it, you're going to have this huge block of if statements, which is almost unreadable. Okay, so the better way of doing this stuff is probably to find a way to make it all into one uh, long if block or and break it down in some way. So you, you could, alternatively, you could say if your favorite color is blue and dim sum. So you could change this to be something like if your favorite color is blue and favorite food equals dim sum, then print food and color, what are the odds? Okay, then you could say if favorite color equals blue and not favorite color equal or favorite food equals dim sum, then you'd print the same thing here. So Looking at both of the, what I just did, these kind of do the same thing. Oh, they should do the same thing. Uh, so let's see if I can get this down here. So let's say I change blue. I have blue and dim sum. Uh, whoops, I need to actually put an elif here, not an if. So this should be elif. Include it as part of this block. Food in color, what are the odds? Awesome. Um, but let's say I change this back to tempura. That's my favorite color too. So this statement here does the same thing as what I just had. But if you notice, I only indent one time. Now the if statement is longer, and that's okay, as long as it doesn't get too long. Uh, and that's one way you can kind of make the code a little more concise or a little bit more readable. So there's a trade-off. Either the if statement is longer, or you're indenting more and you're putting more if statements inside. And it's actually more lines of code as well. All right, so think about the trade-offs when you're working on this and, and what actually looks better and what is more readable. Uh, because if you're working in the real world and you're gonna take this code and give it to somebody else, you want them to actually be able to read what you've written. Okay, so that's just a, a quick summary of what you can do with an if statement inside of another if statement. Okay, I will see you in the next video. And if you have any questions, please leave them on the site or in the YouTube comment section. Thank you.